All right, everybody. So here we are. I'm here with my friend Proxens. Say hello to the people, Proxens. Hello. All right. So we are here to talk about what everyone else is talking about, and that is E3. E3 2018 is super duper hyped this year. There are so many things that I personally am excited about and I want to talk about, and I'm sure Proxens here feels the same way. Oh, there's 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 like a lot of stuff happening, man. Yeah. Exactly. And we're going to get into that. Um, just one important thing to note, at the time of this recording, um, we are a few days away from E3, so uh, there's the potential for anything that we're talking about today uh, to potentially get leaked after this gets posted, but uh, with all that in mind, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So, um, I have my list of notes here, you have my list of notes here. Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Do you want to just talk about something that's already been shown? And it's not the big thing that's already been shown, but it's Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. So, Pokemon as a whole. Yeah, uh, roughly two weeks ago or one week ago, the trailer for... It's already been a week ago? I think it was a week ago. Oh my goodness. The trailer for Pokemon Let's Go, uh, Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, was shown. Oh. And essentially... <laughs> It is a game meant to bridge the gap between the more casual audience of Pokemon and then the more competitive audience. And the reason it's like that is because a lot of people played Pokemon Go and now it's coming out in the Go style. And it's a pretty cool game. But we already know stuff about that. Yeah. One thing we don't know stuff about is the core RPG type title that's supposed to be coming out next year. Next year. Right. Sometime next year. I think this is the later half of next year. While we're on the topic of Let's Go, though, I kind of want to expand my thoughts a little bit, if you don't mind. Okay. So, Pokemon Let's Go. You mentioned that it's going to be like a sort of bridge the gap situation from... It's, it's, it's meant to convert those people that played Pokemon Go, which is a lot, yeah. um, over into the mainline series games um, on the home console. And I think that's awesome. Um, as someone who's just the, like a huge Pokemon fan, I think this is a great opportunity to reach a wider audience than Pokemon already has. And I know that sounds really weird because Pokemon already does that. But in order to kind of diversify its audience and kind of, I don't know, I feel like this game is more of just like a testing the waters and seeing what they can do with the future of Pokemon, not just in the mainline series games, but as far as like maybe just appealing to casual players as well, which I don't consider myself to be a casual player, but I do find uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee very enticing and very interesting. And um, there's a lot of ideas there that are totally brand new for the series, and I think that's really great. Um, yeah, and one of the really cool things about it is that it manages to bring some stuff in from Go that makes the game attractive to Pokemon Go players, but it also maintains a large aspect of just the general feel of Pokemon while making it look really, really nice since it has, like, Switch graphics. Oh, yeah. And, you know, people were expecting the first game on Switch to be something massive, like Breath of the Wild, but I don't think they considered the fact that that's not what Pokemon is. Pokemon is, like, its own thing. It can't just have a massive leap from a normal game style to something open world. It, it has to have something there to transition. So maybe next year the game will be in some form of style like the open world, not necessarily to the level of Breath of the Wild, but something to make people happy. Because I know some people weren't necessarily too happy about Pokemon Let's Go. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what, to be honest, I can see where some of them are coming from. Uh, just the kind of the way that it was presented, they were having that little press conference that they were having in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think just the way that they ordered it rubbed people the wrong way for like a little bit. So they went from Pokemon Quest, which I feel like a majority of people that I know, I'm just using anecdotal evidence. I'm not sure if this is speaking to the general Pokemon uh, fan base. But for me personally, I saw that game and I was kind of like, nah, you know, um, I'm not really too into those kinds of games but pokemon quest is pretty cool it is i mean there's definitely an audience for it i 
I just am not part of that, unfortunately. I ended up trying it after uh, all that news broke out, and it's still, it's just kind of eh. But anyways, they presented that first, and um, after that, they showed off Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which a lot of people were taking as, oh, this is the big Switch game that they were planning, and this is the, the thing that we've been waiting to see. Um, but it turns out that it wasn't, actually. Um, the thing that people are waiting to see is a mainline series game, which is going to be coming out next year. And I know there's still, like, sort of an argument on whether or not Pikachu and Eevee is a main series game. Um, but for the purpose of comparison, I'm just going to call it a spin-off. Um, and to present it in that way, I think, kind of rubbed people the wrong way. But, uh, rest assured that there is a set time frame, being the later half of 2019, for that, like huge main series Pokemon game to come out. And I'm excited for it. I expect uh, big things from it. And if it follows the trend of uh, all of Nintendo's bigger franchises coming to the Switch and how they're sort of reinventing their formula, that is sort of the expectation and sort of what I'm expecting from uh, the new Pokemon games coming out next year. Not to say that it's going to happen, but if we kind of just look at the trend that's going on right now with all of the Switch games coming out, more specifically, Breath of the Wild and uh, Mario Odyssey, I expect uh, Pokemon on the Switch next year to be sort of like a reimagining or like a reinvent reinvention of the uh, Pokemon formula. And I think that would be, like, huge <laughs> for yeah. for a lot of people, mainly because... The just... only thing is... What's that? Uh, the only thing is, some people still have their expectations a bit too far like a bit too high because see you know when sun and moon came out a lot of people enjoyed the game but a lot of people still felt that this change in formula was like oh i don't like it it's different it's not cool oh for sure yeah so the issue is game freak with the core title coming out in 2019 has to be very very careful and very very like you know, smart with their decisions to make sure this game is something that is pushed out to as many audiences as possible. And I think that's another one of the good reasons that Pokemon Let's Go is coming out first, since it'll make it so more people who were casual just say, oh, okay, this is cool. You know, it's it's not Pokemon Go, but it, it's cool. It's fun. It looks nice. Oh, it looks so nice. <laughs> I could go on about those graphics. Those people will be like looking at the next title and i'm assuming the next title will look nicer and they'll probably think hey switching from pokemon go to pokemon let's go was fun and now i get to switch from this game to this other game so that'll probably be fun too and then it's like a, a stepping stone to the next title and also they have to make sure that the regular more competitive like competitive audiences pleased with what's going to happen in that game so they're not just like oh it's too easy and too hand-holding like Sun and Moon. For sure, yeah. And I think um, that is something that the new Pokemon game has to take into consideration, too, is just appealing to both sides of the of the spectrum. Um, yeah. And I feel like, personally, I feel like Breath of the Wild did that uh, pretty well. It totally blew everyone away, just the, the, the format of that game and just the way it's structured was way, way different than any Zelda game had done before it, and I feel like if... Hmm. <laughs> well, see, the thing with that is that nobody had anything to complain about in Breath of the Wild. Because, look, the game looked great. It, has, it had a story. It had character development. It had, like, everything was solid. It, it wasn't perfect, because nothing can really be perfect, but for a... Legend of Zelda title, it was the most perfect game that it could be. I think so too. And as far as like how we could appeal to both sides of the, the spectrum, I think the next Pokemon, just to kind of wrap this all up, <laughs> I think uh, the next Pokemon has to include um, GTS, which I'm not sure is actually going to be available on Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I think it's just going to be local. Uh, multiplayer and um, trading. Uh, it was actually mentioned that there will most likely be some form of online. Because it was initially announced by a larger news outlet that it'll have only local, but then that was changed to 
saying that there will be some form of online. Oh boy, I don't know what to feel anymore. <laughs> so like, th there will be online battles. Right. Yeah. So yeah, but Anyways. they won't be like competitive. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's actually in my notes here. Is I have GTS online battles, and also kind of just what we were saying earlier, just a, a little bit of a shakeup as far as the formula for Pokemon games go. But those are my hopes for Pokemon 2019. But at this point, I mean, there's not really any sort of evidence that we can base that off of. That's purely just me wishing. <laughs> yeah. And I really do hope that they end up saying some information about this at E3, because it would be cool. But given the fact that something has already been mentioned a week ago, the likelihood is lower, but there's still a chance that something will happen. So that's what we can hope for. Yeah. So now, do you want to transition into the next topic? Sure. Which is the the thing that is most likely on everybody's mind. Oh boy. The big Smash 5. And it's Smash 5. It's not a port. It's Smash 5. It's its own game. <laughs> Hashtag not a port. I don't know how people can go on believing that. That's crazy. Watch me be totally wrong and it's totally a port. <laughs> Oh man, that that would make this not age well, but I firmly believe that it's going to be a totally new game, and with that in mind, um, we are definitely going to be seeing uh, Smash 5 at uh, E3. I feel like that's, a, that's a no-brainer. Maybe just, just a little bit. Like, they'll show a trailer and that'll be alright. Oh yeah, definitely right. <laughs> yeah. They, they won't have the entire area set up to look like a Smash thing. They won't have people playing smash they won't have demos available no, no. they won't have a tournament or anything solely dedicated to no, <laughs> no. but um... okay we're, we're obviously being sarcastic here that that's going to happen it, it's it's the biggest game of the year yes it's smash 5 yes whenever a new smash game comes out it, it just like brings a new sense to the community everybody's like whoa what's going to happen in this one what are they going to do are they going to make it amazing are they going to keep this stuff we like are they going to take out this stuff we don't like and that's something that makes this game good but also difficult because <laughs> it, it has to be similar to any game it has to be designed in a way where people will enjoy it and there might be things that are like oh i don't like this but people move on and they'll deal with it so only time will tell yeah and Time can... is about a week, <laughs> week and a half. We can all be absolutely certain that time has been, uh, to varying degrees of nice to the past games in the series. Um, but I don't know. I have high hopes for this one. And um, I think it's a almost 100% guarantee that we'll get some sort of trailer revealing some new character slash characters. Um... And with that in mind, um, Proxens, do you have any dream characters that you would want to see introduced into Smash 5? So, something I'd like to consider here. When a new character is brought in, I, I, in my own personal opinion, would expect this character to come from a franchise not as popular in the West, but more popular in Japan. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, the game is made in Japan and it's more likely. <laughs> kind of like Ness. But yeah, I, I'd expect that, and in my opinion, a character from a company that has recently had very good relations with Nintendo, Aww. level 5, that I would really enjoy to see in the game, would be a character that's a staple character in a certain series I thoroughly enjoyed called Yokai Watch. Oh, that would be Jibanya. Jibanya, that'd be a, yeah. Yeah, having Jibanya in Smash would be an interesting concept, and it's something that if you consider... It would make sense. Level 5 is a pretty well-established company in Japan. It makes a lot of its games for Nintendo platforms. It has a well-established audience that if people saw, Hey look, this character from this game is in this other game. I think I'll enjoy this game. Yeah. So, and I think... A dream character is Jibani. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have expected that, to be honest, coming from you. And, um... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Yokai Watch series has actually gained popularity over the years. Is that right? Or gained like a mm -hmm. like a slightly bigger following than it did? Well, not exactly. Okay. See, this is why I'm asking you because you probably know more than I do. <laughs> the thing is, uh, games the the sales have fluctuated, 
first game sold a certain number second game i believe sold more and then it dropped down a little bit for the third game and then the fourth game is on the horizon we don't know too much about it it's going to happen soon probably there's there's a release date attached to it but nobody knows the exact details of that ah okay and okay so in relation to that what i'm wondering too is maybe that's just a product of the fact that it's um a 3ds title rather than a switch title because if you consider this too in relation to jibanyan smash as a whole uh is sort of known as the kingmaker and for those of you that don't know what that means you can essentially think of it as you can put a character in smash and like think about think about marth fire emblem didn't really have that much of a huge following um as it did after Marth was included in Smash uh, Melee uh, years ago. So the term Kingmaker essentially just means that when you're in a Smash game, it's a big deal, and people are going to pay attention to the games that you originate from. And I feel like that, in combination with a potential Yokai Watch game on the Switch, with the Switch being like a huge platform, and it's just gaining and gaining and gaining as uh, time goes on, I feel like both of those put together would really just boost the boost the public interest in Yokai Watch, and I think that'd be a, just overall good for everyone involved. And I think it'd be cool to just see him in the game. I don't know, but sorry, go on. <laughs> Another thing is there's probably going to be a lot more characters in this game relative to Smash 4. Oh, and that's, I hope so. That's to be expected. So there will be more third-party characters coming in and... Most likely, there'll be some expansion of the first party characters, so that's pretty cool. Yes. There's already like people speculating, oh, is this person going to be in the game? Is this person going to be in the game? But so far, everything is just speculation. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Again, it's basically a week until stuff gets announced, and the moment stuff gets announced, the internet is going to go crazy, and yes. they'll be like... Whoa, dude, I can't believe, insert character name here, is in <laughs> Smash. Or they'll say, whoa, dude, why didn't they put, insert character name here, in Smash. <laughs> and then the arguments are just going to start all over again. Those beautiful, but beautiful yeah. arguments. <laughs> but it, it, it's fun. That game is going to be fantastic because it'll just bring more people together. Because Smash does that. Smash just has a community that is pretty consistent with sticking together and it's enjoyable it's a fun game to play a fun game to watch it's just it's great overall and you know it'll be cool once e3 comes around and all the content on the game is shown and people will get to see what this game is truly going to be about oh i'm yeah. just brindled we'll, with excitement to see it yeah <laughs> I and really they'll be just able want to, to play see, it like... in 2018. <laughs> That's still blowing my mind, too, that it's releasing this year at some point. Well, they've had time to work on it, so it makes sense. Please bring me my choir kids. That's all I want. <laughs> I actually made a, uh, a prediction video years ago before Smash 4 came out, um, detailing some of my wish list characters and... Needless to say, none of them were included, <laughs> but um, some of them that I still maintain that I'd want to see in Smash 5 would be the Choir Kids from uh, Rhythm Heaven, which is a series that I don't feel like gets enough love from Nintendo, being that it's so good. Um, if anybody listening has never played a Rhythm Heaven game, go do that. Uh, Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix being the best of the bunch, but I would like to see them. I think their potential for interesting movesets is just infinite you could do so many things with them uh cooking mama is another one too that i feel like would just be <laughs> hilarious to have in there sort of akin to the Wii fit trainer and how when she was revealed people were like oh that's hilarious and i was totally not expecting that myself and um my last one i have a little list here is uh crystal from Star Fox. i don't really have a reason i just like crystal her design is cool and she has a staff so those are my character wants for uh, the upcoming Smash game, I feel like there's also an increasing potential in third-party uh, characters. Just a few examples being Crash from Crash Bandicoot and Sans from Undertale. Uh, namely That's because their titles are... Yeah, their titles are coming to the Switch. And I feel like now is... 
as good a time as any to bring those characters into this franchise. So I am like, I could talk forever about how excited I am for Smash 5, but um, yeah, we'll go ahead and just uh, move on yeah. over here to our next topic. Let's talk about some games that there has been a really large desire for them and there hasn't been much talk about them. And this comes from, first off, the franchise of Animal Crossing. Oh, which is boy. <laughs> fantastic. Animal Crossing games are great. Recently, there was the mobile app for Animal Crossing. Yep. And I feel like if Animal Crossing isn't shown during E3, there's a problem. There's going to be a lot of hurt feelings. Just... <laughs> Like, Look, can, it, it just, has to happen. This is just, like, bringing me dark memories of E3 2015 when those beautiful Animal Crossing graphics graced the Nintendo Direct screen and everyone was screaming their heads off at it. And then it ended up just being uh, Amiibo Festival. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Nintendo learns and Nintendo observes. Oh, and yeah. they've seen there's an insane <laughs> amount of, like, desire for... An Animal Crossing. I don't think I don't know if they could ever realize how much hype there is for that, but I have a feeling that this is the year that we will actually see uh, an Animal Crossing on the Switch. And, Here's um, what will happen. Go on, yeah. We get a trailer. It'll be some sort of fog. It's it, 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 the fog dissipates. Mm -hmm. We see like an Animal Crossing looking area show up, and then the logo pops up on screen. It says a year, and then it goes on to the next thing. <laughs> No, but I want to see more. <laughs> Honestly, if that was if that was it, then I'd still be happy. But in my mind, in my in my dreamscape, this is what I'm thinking. Same thing, same scenario that you said. Although after that, it transitions into some gameplay showing off like the visual style and the sort of the graphical fidelity of the Switch with the um with an Animal Crossing game, as well as just showing off some of the features as well. Um, sort of like an overview of what to expect. For me, personally, I would love to see online play make a return. I feel like that's almost uh, guaranteed to see on the Switch title. Um, one thing that New Leaf did not do as well as I wanted it to, and kind of turned me off to the whole idea of playing online, was easier to initiate town visiting, because in New Leaf... To go from my town to visit someone else's was, like, it was a big process, and <laughs> I had to, like, really want to go see this, that person's, um, setup just to justify how, how long it would have taken to get there. Um, as, as well as maybe some more town activities, too. I realized that Animal Crossing is one of those titles where you kind of just play it for a little bit every day and then put it down and kind of go play something else, but... Uh, for me personally, I want the option to be able to like sit down for a little bit longer and um, occupy my time with some more things to do around my town. Maybe some more customization, um, maybe more mini games for Tortimer's um, Island. I almost forgot the name there. Tortimer's Island um, is that little location you can go to in New Leaf where you can play mini games with um, with your friends and get additional items and stuff. It was really fun. And uh, I'd like to see more of that. More online integration and social interactions in, in Animal Crossing for Switch would be, like, my dream. That's what yeah. I would want from that. <laughs> it, it would be really, really nice. And, see, in, in my personal opinion, this is, like, laying stuff out. This discussion is about E3 2018. But just to expand a little bit, mm -hmm. E3 2018, the main focus is going to be Smash. Oh, yeah. For... E3 2019, based on what happens here, on what's announced, I'm expecting 2019 to be based on one of four things. First one, Animal Crossing. Second one, Metroid Prime 4. Or, uh, third one, Yoshi. And fourth one, Kirby. Never mind, because Kirby's already out. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry. But we'll yeah. forgive you. We'll forgive you. <laughs> uh, one of three things. Because <laughs> those are all very big franchises. But to be fair, scaling it down, it'll either most likely be Metroid Prime 4 or uh, Animal Crossing. Because those are really big. People enjoy them. 
people would probably enjoy like a themed area on that. Because last year it was sort of partially Legend of Zelda and partially Mario, right? Uh, last year, I want to say it was all Mario because their setup was all New Donk City. Oh, right. Oh, I didn't get to go to any of the past ones. so Yeah, the year prior was exactly. the Breath of the Wild one, which was amazing. Okay. Okay, so I had stuff messed up there. 2016, Breath of the Wild. 2017, Mario. 2018, Smash. 2019, who knows? But back to Animal Crossing oh, so I don't make any more mistakes. That'd be so cool if it was like Metroid. Walking yeah. around in an environment all decorated like that. Oh, that'd be awesome. Anyways, go on. <laughs> I think Metroid is highly likely, but bringing it back to Animal Crossing so I don't mess up any future stuff again, it's going to be hype. Just like any Animal Crossing game, except for, you know... I still love it anyway. I mean, it's like, it's not my cup of tea, but... If it makes other people happy, then that's fine, but just give me my Animal Crossing, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> so that'll probably be shown, and now would you like to move on to something a little bit more obscure? Oh? It's a, it's a title that has been quite large in the internet. Oh, what's this? And said title is Fortnite. So. Ah, okay. Th that's probably going to be announced. If yeah. you don't think so. I mean, it you know. makes the most sense to incorporate that there. The let me, let me let me just clarify that I don't play Fortnite that much. I played it before. Um, I just didn't find myself being engaged with it long enough to... Any, anyways, um, if I was in that boat where this is something that I wanted, the only thing that I could see is sort of being a drawback at all if there was one is the fact that i just wouldn't be able to play it portably like the rest of my switch games and that was kind of my sort of my problem with the resident evil cloud version as well <laughs> which is a whole nother story but um when i when i get games for my switch i buy them with the uh intention and expectation that i can play them everywhere and yeah. if I was a fan of Fortnite, I feel like I would just end up playing it on a different system entirely. Um, just so... I don't know. Like, I wouldn't see the benefit, I guess. Because the Switch, inevitably, is going to downscale all of the textures and everything. And it just won't run quite as well as some of the other systems that it's on and some of the other platforms. And I feel like that would be a big drawback for me. And I don't know if I would immediately hop onto that band, like, that, that idea. But... I don't know. I could be wrong. I mean, the Switch is a successful system and a growing platform, so it does make sense. It does make sense. Yeah, and, you know, if you consider everything, it's already out on basically every other platform. I think the only platform it's not out on is Android. 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You're going a little bit too far with that one. Oh, but man. <laughs> It's not out on Android, but it is out on everything else. So bringing it to Switch would introduce it to another audience, more people who would say, hey, it's free to play. It looks okay. So maybe it's good to play. <laughs> did you mean that to rhyme? I did. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's just like not my expertise to say whether or not that's a good thing all right well let's talk about a thing i like things that we don't I like we don't things. know the, we don't know where it is and you know what we're talking about i do so why don't you hold this one here and tell oh. people what we're talking about wait what what thing are we talking about <laughs> lost pikmin 4 oh that's actually on my notes and just to read it verbatim from my notes, it says, Pikmin 4, where is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where okay. Where is Pikmin? Yeah, so so that's a thing that exists somewhere in Miyamoto's basement. Um, so Pikmin 4 is interesting as well in that, as far as we know, it's been done for quite some time. I want to say it was in, like, oh, I'm going to get the date wrong. But um, I want to say it was in 2013 or 2014 
uh, was when Miyamoto, in an interview, I can't remember if it was at E3 or at the Game Awards, but in an interview stated that Pikmin 4 was nearing completion. And that was, at this point, uh, like four or five years ago. And a lot of us at the time were fully expecting it to come out on the Wii U. The Wii U's time has come and passed. And now we're all just left wondering, like, what? Where did it go? <laughs> you know? And, uh, like, there are just so many, so many questions that I have that I hope get answered someday. <laughs> yeah. See, I expect something to be mentioned about it because there is definitely a big audience for Pikmin. And recently there was the Pikmin title on the 3DS. So I'm expecting there to be some discussion, maybe like a trailer, or maybe there will be a lot of discussion. They could say, hey, this is the game. It's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> oh boy, I wish. Nintendo, if you're listening, do that. <laughs> okay, not, not to that extent, but I'd expect something where they're like, hey, the game is ready. It's going to be out this time, this day, specifically here, and you're going to enjoy it. Here's some gameplay, and maybe it'll be shown a little bit on the treehouse or something like that. I mean, honestly, like, they don't even have to show me anything. Just say that, hey, this game is done. We're going to release it in this broad time frame. And I'll be like, okay, cool. At least we're on the same page here, and we can acknowledge that this game actually exists, because since his mention of that like years ago we've heard nothing about it so yeah. i don't think any real anyone really knows what to expect from it <laughs> to be honest but we can hope for something that's right we can hope we can only hope bring back louie is all i ask <laughs> see we, we can hope for something with every franchise but i feel like the ones we've discussed so far are very likely to be mentioned to some extent so far, yeah. yes. We haven't gotten to my to my dream reveals yet, but so far I feel like all of the ones that we've talked about are pretty reasonable. Yeah. And now, let's move a little bit away from games and let's discuss a different endeavor that Nintendo has participated in, and rather there's two different endeavors. First off, something that recently got released, and that is the Nintendo Labo, and then something that has been consistent over the past few years, and that is Amiibo. Oh, oh yeah, that's on my list too. So, first off, with the Labo, it already released. Mm -hmm. People enjoyed it, and yeah. it brought out a lot of creativity. It brought out Bill Nye, too. <laughs> <laughs> Some people decided, hey, I like this. I enjoy doing stuff like this. I'm going to try and do something more. And people started customizing things. People, you know, made new creations. People adjusted their own creations out of different materials. <laughs> Man, bless those people. I have no idea how they have the patience to sit around and get all that stuff put together. And just overall, it brought out a lot of creativity, so I highly expect something new to be mentioned in the E3 presentation, since in the initial presentation for the Labo, we did see some other devices shown that weren't in any of the already released kits, so... Did we really? Yeah, there were things i believe i don't know exactly what but there were some things in there oh man i guess i wasn't looking hard enough i didn't know that that'll probably be announced at e3 and now moving on to amiibo which i'll let you lead the conversation on this because i don't have that many of them oh. but i'm going to oh get boy <laughs> okay so <laughs> um okay so as far as amiibo go i feel like a lot of people that um I feel like a lot of people don't know that I have a huge uh, Amiibo collection. And it all started with uh, the Smash Brothers line back in, I want to say, late 2014 or maybe a little bit earlier. Um, I started collecting the entire Smash line. So as each figure came out, um, I would like stay up late nights to get those uh, pre-orders in because if we don't, if like, if... For those that don't remember, is what I'm trying to say, um, Amiibo used to be very, very hard to come by, and they would release in waves, so every wave that would come out would instantly sell out, you couldn't see it anywhere, people were scalping them, it was a mess. So, oh, yeah. I was one of those people that I was like, I am not paying scalpers prices, I will not let them get away with that and use me like that, I am going to be up like at 4 o'clock in the morning and hitting that pre-order button and then going to sleep. And that's what I did. So, as a result of that, I have 
almost the entire uh, Smash line of Amiibo, which if you kind of count it out and look at it on paper is about 40 just for the Smash line alone, probably a little bit more than that. Um, you also yeah, have the... That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even done yet. I also have some of them from <laughs> the Zelda line of figures. So I have Majora's Mask, Mask Link, uh, Skyward Sword Link, and Ocarina of Time Link. Um, there's some that I have from the Kirby line. The Breath of the Wild line also had a few figures that I bought, as well as the uh, three wedding amiibo from Mario Odyssey. Point being that I have a ton, and um, I have like I have like fifteen. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm kind of struggling with the idea of what to do with them right now, and like how I want to present them on the shelf. But all that aside, uh, as far as the future of amiibo, I I don't really have a good answer for that, and I would be willing to bet that that Nintendo doesn't either, uh, namely because a lot of the sort of incorporations of Amiibo in most recent games um, have really just been used to unlock stuff in games. Um, I want to say that Detective Pikachu is the most recent one I can think of with the giant Amiibo. Uh, his unlocks, like, cutscenes in that game, which, if you if you really think about it, uh, for a Toys to Life figure that's supposed to be branded as a f not only a figure, but uh, able to be used in games, is not quite a lot of functionality. But in all honesty, also, I think a lot of people that do buy Amiibo mostly just buy them for the way that they look. I mean, that's the category that I fall into. So, as far as functionality goes, I don't really think it's here nor there for me. But if Nintendo was to concoct some sort of way to make them uh, interesting and the content that they introduce into the games uh, a little bit more worthwhile. I wouldn't be opposed to that because I'm already buying them anyway, and to get any sort of digital benefits from that is just icing on the cake at that point. So, um, And one thing that is definitely going to happen is there will be more Amiibo coming out. Oh yeah, it, for sure. It, it, it's just gotta happen. And be it like something where it's announced at E3 or something where it's like mentioned, I don't know. But I'm expecting something to be said like, hey, look, this game is coming out, Smash. And hey, look, these Amiibo happen to be coming to your nearest store where you can go and buy them <sighs> if you can buy them before 17,000 other people go online and buy them before you. <laughs> I would be excited and cry at the same time because that's another Smash line that I have to collect. <laughs> yeah, so there's definitely <laughs> going to be more Amiibo coming out and it's highly likely that they'll be out for Smash because it happened with Smash 4, so... It did. You know. I mean, and also... Just based on what we've seen from that small trailer uh, a couple months ago, Smash 5 is changing up the designs on a lot of their characters, so I fully expect there to be a whole nother Smash line of characters coming out representative of the way they're depicted in Smash 5. So, so. you know how you bought all of those Amiibo for Smash 4? Yes, I do know that. <laughs> well, you're going to buy the same ones. Oh but no! They look slightly different. Nintendo, do I have a choice? No. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So that's our personal predictions for Amiibo and stuff. And now we're, we're essentially done with the basis of what we think is reasonable in opinion for stuff that's going to happen. Quote unquote Obviously, reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, there's some more stuff you can consider, like DLC for some games. Oh! Some... Oh! That reminds me. <laughs> Sorry to totally interrupt you, but that reminds me that. Mario Odyssey DLC is totally a possibility as well. Some more uh -huh. DLC uh -huh. to be announced. Dude, that yeah. would be... Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Just just imagine that I'm at a board meeting in the Nintendo headquarters right now. Here's what I'm thinking, Miyamoto. And listen up. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario Origins. It's a DLC pack for Mario Odyssey and... It comes out in installments, similar to a season pass. You pay one price and you get all of the content in it. Um, Super Mario Origins is going to include kingdoms, side missions, as well as outfits from all of the Mario games from his past. So there would be like a Mario 64 pack. I'd like to take the role of Miyamoto here. Oh, yes. Go on. <laughs> no, that's not happening. So someone, someone get this man out of here. Someone remove okay. him, Reggie. <laughs> so, yeah, Mario 64. Most importantly, 
out of the bunch, Mario Galaxy DLC would blow my mind. Just think of playing Mario Odyssey and all of the intricacies and nuances of that game's controls in the realm of Mario Galaxy and introducing those Mario Galaxy mechanics like gravity into Mario Odyssey, as well as just looking at Mario Galaxy visuals in a Mario Odyssey setting and how beautiful that game is. In the snapshot mode, oh my gosh. Oh One my gosh. small thing. One small thing before you continue. This is sort of transitioning us out of the reasonable category. I didn't manage to finish there because, you know, DLC. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess It so. gets Alec excited. <laughs> okay. But uh, that, uh, that we can chalk that up to me going on a tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. But it, it transitions. It transitions of... into our dream reveals section, no? Yeah. Yeah. So DLC in reasonable context, there'll probably be some DLC announced. Mario for Sunshine games. DLC. Oh, okay. be beautiful. Alec, that's like, <laughs> that's. So, so there's there's reasonable, there's dreams, and then there's that little little place very far away from here that is called almost impossible. <laughs> well, they did tease me with that Mario Sunshine outfit, so here's hoping, right? <laughs> right? I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> All right. So now that we've successfully transitioned into our dream reveals portion of today's discussion there are a lot of dream reveals that they just flood my mind with how many things that i would just love to see at e3 but i'm gonna go ahead and let you go first proxens you can just keep it short and sweet and kind of rapid fire them out and right, i'll so, just uh be here i'll be your miyamoto now <laughs> <laughs> so dream reveals first off let's consider some games that we would hope would be localized uh first one snack world it's been in discussion. It's very likely to happen Perfect. since it, it already got ported to the Switch. So, you know, it wouldn't be too difficult to bring it over here. I love that idea. Another one another one would be Busters 2, a Yokai Watch game. Pretty exactly. nice. Yes. And then, let's see. If you say Mother 3, I'm kicking you out of this board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of things you can consider here in games that are dreams. Because you could really list off anything. You could say, hey, I want this game to happen. Hey, I want this game to happen. But oh. to be fair, you have to be reasonable within this context. I don't think you're ready for my list. <laughs> okay. But, like, personally, those are two games I'd hope to see. Some other ones would be some, like, uh, stuff like Mario Maker. Because that would be fun. Oh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. And that's about the extent of what I want. Because I know some of my other ideas would probably be more reasonable or they'd be on that island, sitting to the side. <laughs> Just there. Yeah. And in regards to Mario Maker 2, I wonder how they would tackle the lack of uh, touchscreen controls when you're playing it in console mode. I'm sure they'll think of a way to do it. Oh, maybe, maybe through motion controls, like through a pointer on the yeah. uh, Joy-Cons. Never mind. I just answered my own question. <laughs> so, I just wanna, answered my own question. Do you want to rapid fire through your dream oh. reveals? Oh. <laughs> All right. I've got one question, Proxens, before I go ahead and read these off to you. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for some of the most hype announcements that you could possibly think of in the realm of Nintendo reveals? Okay, let me just put an asterisk before you say anything. These are all Alex... Alex is... <laughs> this is all coming from my mind, and when I think of the best E3 I could possibly think of, this is what comes to mind. So, here we go. Starting with number one on my list, I'm just going to rapid fire these out. Mm -hmm. Number one, Luigi's Mansion 3 reveal with optional online co-op. Similar to how Resident Evil hands, handles co-op, it'd be cool to see Professor Egad traveling with Luigi through various mansions and stuff, uh, fighting ghosts, and potentially it's probably going to be the same storyline as the first one in which you rescue Mario. So I think that would be really <laughs> cool. Uh, just the fact that they're bringing Nintendo Switch online uh, gets me thinking of the, a lot of the possibilities that existing games and existing franchise could, um, like how they could use that to their advantage. And I feel like Luigi's Mansion 3 with co-op would be amazing. Um... So yeah, that's the first one. <laughs> I don't know that that's ever going to happen, but number two, okay. number two, um, I feel like this is somewhat reasonable. 
uh, Mario Party 11 with online multiplayer. So, Mario Party 11, my ideal setup for a Mario Party game on Switch. Huge roster of characters. Considering that the way that they treat Mario Kart and now Mario Tennis and some of the other Mario spin-off games on the Switch, those games have pretty extensive rosters as opposed to series past, and I feel like Mario Party 11 would be a tremendous opportunity to incorporate a bigger roster of characters, because historically, Mario Party games, like, they really just focus on the main characters of the series, but I think it'd be really cool to incorporate characters from just all <laughs> all corners of Mario's history and get rid of the car. Like, <laughs> is, is that something that act people actually like? <laughs> I don't know that I know a single person that prefers the car thing as opposed to traditional Mario Party gameplay. Just, just, just get rid of it, please. Just, just trust me, Nintendo. It'll go over a lot better. Um, also, one little extra thing. Bring back, this is totally specific too, bring back character costumes from Mario Party 2. Um, Mario Party 2 being the N64 title of Mario Party, and for those that have never played it, um, one of the cool little features of Mario Party 2 is that depending on which board that you played on, which game board that you played on, all of the characters that were playing in that game had costumes themed to the whatever the theme was of the board that you're playing on. So if you're like in a pirate level, all your characters are wearing pirate outfits. If you're in a space level, all your characters are wearing space outfits. I think it just adds that extra level of personality and presentation. And it's weird because I don't think there was any other Mario Party game that incorporated that, which is baffling to me because I really, really love that. But that is my ideal Mario Party 11. <laughs> a few of those things are more likely than others, but Mario Party 11, number two. So, and number three is what we already talked about, Mario Origins DLC. Super duper awesome idea. I feel like it'd be great. I would pay top dollar to have Mario 64 Kingdoms and Mario Galaxy Kingdoms, Sunshine, all these other kingdoms from Mario's past in Mario Odyssey. That would be cool. I hear you laughing, Proxens. Don't laugh at me. Don't crush my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, there's only some extent that that would be possible. <laughs> Hire me, Nintendo. I'll make you a bunch of money. And I'm not even done yet. I still have a few more on my list. So, number four, Switch Online is a thing that's happening later this year. And one of the benefits that they announced for that service is going to be NES titles uh, released uh, at the time of launch. I don't think that they specified whether or not those titles are going to cycle out like sort of like the Netflix library, or if they're just going to compound over time. But I feel like it'd be really, really cool to incorporate consoles beyond the NES. So potentially N64, GameCube games, with the added online functionality that they're introducing to the NES titles. That would be so cool. Like, imagine Wave Race for the GameCube <laughs> with online multiplayer. <laughs> I okay. realize some of these are, like, totally off the wall, but just imagine it for a second. Wave Race Online. Uh, past Mario Parties with online multiplayer. Luigi's, the original Luigi's Mansion with co-op or, like, leaderboards or something. There are so many possibilities for a service like that, and I feel like it'd be such a missed opportunity not to cons at least consider it. So, that is my number four on my list here. And then, finally, I feel like this is the most reasonable of the bunch. Just... It's very plain and simple, just a Super Mario Galaxy remastered for the Switch. Um, Super Mario Galaxy being my favorite Mario 3D Mario game of all time. And I think it'd be awesome to see Mario Galaxy on the Switch with all of the super awesome hardware advancements and stuff that we made over the years. To see that game presented in HD, potentially yeah. just a remake in general, I don't know. I would just love to see the return of Mario Galaxy and yeah. I don't know. I think that would be really cool. I don't think that there's really much to say other than that. So see, see, to discuss what you've just mentioned, two of the five are reasonable. <laughs> uh, one of them is on that island that I mentioned earlier, and then the other two are like, eh, it's possible. So your Mario Party Eleven one definitely possible, super reasonable. Super oh, Mario Galaxy, man, that would really be so cool. Like, Super Mario Galaxy, it's gotta happen. Like, come on. It's a great... I mean, they, they do it to great. Zelda. I feel like it's only fair to do it to some of the Mario's games. Yeah, but 
overall, to wrap stuff up, we're excited for E3. And there's going to be a lot there. Obviously, our little discussion here only covers some possibilities. There will be a ton more games, indie titles, other titles overall. So be on the lookout for stuff. It'll be fun. It'll be cool. And I'll let Alec take us out here. Yes. So, in summation, at the end of the day, (laughs) we are both very, very excited for E3 2018. I... I am most excited for Smash 5. I can't wait to go to the show and actually get my hands on it and play it and overall just cry because <laughs> I I am just so excited for that game. It's been so long since I've felt this excited about a Smash game and just the overwhelming amount of possibilities for third-party characters, online multiplayer, uh, the tournament scene as well. Uh, with the fact that the Switch is so portable, there's a lot of good things to look forward to for a Smash 5 this year. And hold on, wait, yeah, Smash 5 this year. That's a crazy thing, too. That game is coming out this year. That is nuts. A game that we didn't even know existed at the beginning of this year is coming out before the end of it. That is nuts. Um, so, yeah, I am overall very, very excited for the show. Um... But feel free, Nintendo, once again, if you're listening, to incorporate some of my dream reveals. That would be that would be something I would love to see, <laughs> whether or not they're reasonable. <laughs> also, before we take off, I want to give a huge shout out over to my friend Proxens here. Um, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below if you want to go check him out. He's a cool dude, and yeah, there's not much to say beyond that, I don't think. He's just a cool fellow. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to Alec. His link will be down below, so check him out. He does cool stuff, and he lost that Pokémon against me, so you know. Hey, now, <laughs> just, you just wait till Mario Tennis comes out, okay? We're gonna throw down, and I'm gonna embarrass you. The time will be now, or then, a month from Not now. If I don't play it, <laughs> end of this month, we'll throw down in Mario Tennis, and right, I will, fine. I will reclaim my, my honor. And I don't know. This is kind of like just going off the rails at this point. But anyways, we're super excited for E3 2018. And thank you all for tuning in and giving us your time. Um, And feel free to let us know down in the comments what you are excited for for E3. What are your dream reveals? See see if you can top mine. (laughs) Feel free to, uh, to let me know. And as always, thanks for listening. Bye, everybody. See you later. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Bye.